Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you my two volume set of abstract algebra books. The book is called Algebra and it was written by Van der Warden. So this is a two volume set and we're going to take a look at what these books teach you in this video. These are considered classic books and they were printed many many times and they contain a lot of really nice mathematics. This book that you have here is one of my favorite abstract algebra books and I thought I should just mention it because these books are a little bit more advanced so they might be too advanced for you and I think this is a better option for beginners. It's called Abstract Algebra a First Course by Dan Saracino. I've actually read this entire book and I've done almost every single exercise. The biggest downside to this book is that it does not have enough content so if you want to become really good at abstract algebra you need to know considerably more abstract algebra than what is found in this wonderful little book. So, great book, I recommend it. I'll leave links to all of these books and a few others in the description. In particular, if you are thinking about getting started with abstract algebra, you want to make sure you know how to write proofs. So I'll leave some proof writing books in the description uh, in case um, you're thinking about getting into mathematics and learning to write proofs. And if you're wondering what do you need to know to learn to write proofs, uh, let me just say you just need to have some motivation, right? And um, you can do it, right? As long as you can read carefully and you have the willpower, um, you can learn uh, how to write proofs. And in theory, you can teach yourself abstract algebra. Uh, I don't want to digress too much, but I just remembered I, I had a friend, um, he was from Argentina, and we used to hang out on the internet uh, in a math chat room. And I still have it. He sent me a PDF of an abstract algebra book that he started to write in Spanish. And I'm pretty sure he was like barely 18 years old. And here he was teaching himself Galois theory. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these books here. So this is a two volume set. And these are in really good condition. I actually have two additional copies uh, that I picked up over the years. Uh, I actually have one in the dust jacket, which I can show you later if I remember. I just have to get up and grab it. Algebra, Algebra Volume 1, B.L. van der Warden, in part based on lectures by E. Arten and E. Norther. So that would be Emmy Norther, uh, who is uh, known for Netherian rings. They are named after her. And this would be Emil Arten. So his son is Michael Arten, who is also a mathematician. Yeah, here's the Ford to the seventh edition. It says it includes extra content. It says, when the first edition was written, it was intended as an introduction to the newer abstract algebra. Parts of classical algebra, in particular the theory of determinants, were assumed to be known. Today, however, the book is commonly used by students as a first introduction to algebra. So that really contradicts everything I just said, right? So this was used as a beginner book, but I still think that uh, my choice is easier. It has there been necessary to include a chapter on vector spaces and tensor spaces in which the fundamental ideas of linear algebra or theory of determinants in particular are discussed. Yeah, Zurich 1966. Wow the book is in great condition. 1970 it says on this copy. Pretty cool. Here he gives you a guide for how to use the book. So it starts with sets so if you don't know much mathematics and theory you could still learn some stuff from this book. And then it has like this little chart. It's a, it's a guide that you can follow uh, and that will help you in your path of self-study, which is kind of nice that it provides that. These are classic books. You know, I, I buy these because um, I collect math books. However, um, I do have um, probably a lot of abstract algebra books because I spent a lot of time studying that at some point. And so I have a lot of abstract algebra texts. It starts with numbers and sets. Then it goes on to groups and then rings and fields. It's pretty quick, right? Look at the page numbers here, 12, 28. I mean, that's, that's groups. Page 12 to page 28, that's all of groups. And look, it talks about subgroups, complexes, cosets, isomorphisms and automorphisms, homomorphisms, normal subgroups, and factor groups. So it's got to be really, really terse. We should, we should take a look at this just to see how terse it is. We'll look at it in a minute. Vector spaces and tensor spaces polynomials that should do fields next it does theory of fields continuation of group theory so it's got some other stuff here groups with operators direct products groups of order p to the n 
The Galois theory, ordering and will ordering of sets. So lots of good mathematics in a book like this. And then infinite field extensions and real fields. Let's just, let's just pan through it and see what we can see in this book. Starts with sets. Look at the notation there. It's a little bit funky. I'm not a big fan of that, um, that typesetting for sets. I don't really like it. And I think that's, in my view, one of the cons of this book is I have a hard time writing the variables. I know that seems silly and it should be like something I could overcome. Um, but math is hard enough. <laughs> you know, it's hard enough. And I think little stuff like that makes it a little bit harder. But I probably should just practice my fancy letters. The number sequence, it says. Let's turn the page. Sum of two numbers, product of two numbers. So really basic here, you see. Greater and less. Finite and countable and denumerables or denumerable sets. Let's let's skip ahead. I want to look at the uh, some of the group theory. So let's see if we can subgroups. Here we go. Complexes cosets. What's this? In group theory, a complex is defined as an arbitrary set of elements of a group. Cool. Then it talks about the product of two complexes. And then here we're already at. The order of a finite group is divisible by the order of each one of its subgroups. Yeah. Corollary. The order of an element of a finite group is a factor of the order of the group. Interesting. Someone was working through this book. They have uh, green check marks there. Then it goes to isomorphisms and automorphisms. Really quick. <laughs> I mean, it just it just jumps from one topic to another. Just very very dense here. Uh, and then rings and fields. I mean, just like that. So uh, most books um, spend considerably more time on groups. I mean, what page is this? Page thirty-two. I mean, I guess they're, you know, he comes back to groups later in the book. This book has uh, no solutions, I believe. There's no answers to any of the exercises, uh, which really, this is not considered the best book for self-study. Still, um, it's a book that you can sit with and you can read. Uh, people say you should read the masters, and this, in my view, is considered a classic and legendary book by a master. Um, really old school book here. Let's take a look at the second one. This one should have different content because it's volume two which makes it really really interesting this is volume two pages are a little more yellow on this one i just got to give it a whiff i i, I wanted to smell the other one but got to take it out of the camera oh so nice volume two and then here it gives you a guide for volume one here's the contents linear algebra Algebras, representation theory of groups and algebras. And then we have general ideal theory of commutative rings, theory of polynomial ideals, integral algebraic elements, fields with valuations. Oh, I remember reading about that. That's, it's been a while since I've seen that topic. Algebraic functions of one variable. Some topics that you don't always see in books here. You know, it's a little more advanced. Topological algebra, it's not something maybe that you've ever heard of. So it starts with modules over a ring. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's going to lead into vector spaces. Normal forms of a matrix in a commutative field. Interesting, commutative field. Uh, you know, by definition, by modern standards, uh, all fields are commutative. So the older books do things a little bit differently sometimes. And that's something to keep in mind when you're reading an old book. And I noticed that too. I have a copy of um, Emil Artin, who uh, I believe is involved here because this is based on his lectures. I have um, a book called Galois Theory, which is based on the lectures of Emil Artin. And it's the same thing, right? There's some definitions there that are just a little bit inconsistent with, with the newer definitions. But yeah, just wanted to show you these classic books. Um, kind, of, kind of interesting. Take a look at these. Until next time, good luck and take care.